Well, good afternoon. It's uh, Monday, August the 3rd. Um, just got done with the nursing home ministry. We didn't have too many out there today, but, um, you know, it doesn't stop the message. You have to continue to keep on doing the message. Today I got the door open and just going to talk to you about a song that we used. Um, there was a song that I knew from the time I was just a little boy. The song when we, when the roll was called up yonder. And, um, uh, I heard the song and then it was about two days later, two or three days later, I found the words to the song that was sent. Somebody had posted it on Facebook and I downloaded the words and I started looking at the words and started studying the words. And I've got the, the book here in the old red back hymnal and uh, I'm going to read you the words, but it was written by a man named James Black. I'm just going on memory now. It was back in 1893, I believe it was, when he wrote the song. He was a Sunday school teacher to uh, some youth, I think. And he had one special little girl that he wanted to do something for far as a roll call for his Sunday school class. And he was trying to come up with a song and he looked through the songbook and he never saw anything in the songbook. So he gets home from church that Sunday night and he gets on the piano and he comes up with the first verse. And the first verse, um, I'm going to read it to you. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. Well, the Bible tells us about the time of the trumpet. It tells me that over in First Thessalonians chapter 4. Um, I'm sure that there's other places that it mentions that. First Corinthians 15 talks about it, I think. It talks about the coming of the Lord. But in this song, it says, When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. And I told the people today that, you know, time here is going to be limited. But time over there will go on and on. It'll be for eternity. Now, I realize the man makes songs the way he wants it to be, and I'm not... I'm not criticizing the words. I'm just trying to explain the words so that we understand, you know, time is going to go on. There's two eternities. You have an eternity with the Lord Jesus in heaven, and you have the eternity with Satan in the place of hell. And there's two eternities that's going to continue to keep going. And the morning breaks eternal, bright, and fair. We don't know when the Lord's going to come, whether it be morning, noon, or night. We don't know. He could come today. He could have come yesterday. And Lord willing, maybe we'll talk about that as well. It says, When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, the only ones that's going to go in the rapture of the church is the ones that are saved. That's the only ones that's going to go is the ones that are saved. And the roll is called up yonder. Verse 2 says, On that bright and cloudless morning, you know, we don't know if it's going to be a bright morning. But I was thinking on the way home today, goes to show you 
how your mind works when your mind is on the Lord. You know, when his brightness appears in the sky, it don't matter what the storm clouds are. It don't matter the darkness of the rainy clouds. What matters is, is that Jesus is going to brighten everything with his appearance. Now, you know, none of us have ever seen the coming of the Lord in the rapture. We don't really know. We got our minds. Our minds tell us what we think that it might be, but we really don't know. I don't think none of us really knows. We can read the Bible. I can go into uh, eyes have not seen. I think that's written in Corinthians over there. Eyes have not, eyes have not seen nor ears heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. But it goes on into that next verse. It says, but we are shown by the spirit. Well, you know, the spirit hasn't really detailed to me yet of what heaven is going to be like. It's something that I think about all the time. But in this second verse, on that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise. And that's true. The dead in Christ is going to rise. That's what Thessalonians chapter 4 told us over there, that the dead in Christ is going to rise. And that's exactly true. And the glory of his resurrection share. That glory is going to be a glory that I don't think that we can even muster to even meditate on because a lot of people will want to see Jesus as the Jesus that is beat up, that is the bloody Jesus, that is the Jesus that was uh, whipped and beat up. I believe on that day that all of that that we think that Jesus will be will be totally mind-boggling to us. I don't even think that we would be able to comprehend exactly what that means. When it, when it, it even spoke right here and the glory of his resurrection share. The glory of the resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies. I had to stop right there and explain to people that everyone is a chosen one. Everybody is chosen. When Jesus come and he made the earth and he made man, he put a soul into every person. Every person has a soul. God loves every human being. He designed heaven for every human being. But, you know, just because you are the chosen or another word for the chosen is the elect. Well, you know, I can be elected to be able to be the chosen, to be able to do like this verse here says, that I can be the chosen one that is able going to, that's going to be able to go to this place that is called heaven. But, you know, the chosen is the ones that accept Jesus Christ. Now, a lot of people get into the predestination and things like that. Well, here's the thing. A person that truly is born again has no problem. But God doesn't give a free pass. God didn't say that the chosen, every chosen person is going to go. Because there's going to be some that may decide that they don't want to, but yet they're still chosen. See, everybody is chosen by God. Let me read that part of the verse again here. When the chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies. I'm glad to know that God took the time to, cho to choose me. I'm honored. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. But, you know, God didn't do it just for me. 
He did it for everybody else. He did it for people that don't name the name of Christ today. You know, I'm thankful that he made everyone chosen, but it's left up to us to decide whether we want to go to this place that it's referring to here. The chosen. Let me read you the third verse. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. There was something yesterday in the church that I had actually forgot to say, and I'm going to say it here. When this verse says about the dawn and setting sun, we want to think of the youngness of life. And we had a little girl in the church service yesterday that was a tiny little girl, probably maybe two or three years old, maybe. I don't really know. But but that dawn till setting sun is not talking about the age of the little girl. It's talking about the age of when you got saved. Because the dawn and the setting sun, the dawn is the time not when you was born. It's when you met the Lord. When you met Jesus Christ. Now, the setting of the sun is the last breath you'll take in this life. When this life is over with, that is what it's talking about, the setting sun. We don't know when the setting sun is. There's a lot of people that are getting close to the setting sun due to their age. I just walked outside a minute ago out to my other little room, and I have a dear lady's ashes on top of the shelf that is out there waiting. And, you know, I couldn't help but, but think of her when I walked in the door. And uh, I still remember her well. I still see her face. But the point that I'm getting is that we don't know when that setting sun is. But if you notice, it says, let us labor for the master. Where do we labor at? We labor here in this life. Down here now, we, let us labor for the master. What we do for the Lord, we're doing it for the master if we've been born again, if we've been saved. From the dawn till setting sun. That means the whole time of our time of salvation to the last breath in our body. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. You know where you're going to talk of the wondrous love and care? You're going to talk about that down here. We won't really probably have to, to discuss his wondrous love and care when we get there because we'll be there with him. We will be experiencing this place that is called heaven but where we're talking about his wondrous love and care is why we down here in this life, while we are working for the master, while we're laboring for the master, it talks about the love and care here. Let, let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Because, see, there's not going to be no setting sun in heaven. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then, when all of life is over, all of life is over, and our work on earth is done, that means when the last breath is taken and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. I can't speak for you. I don't really know. That's what I told them them folks just a few minutes ago, I can't speak for them. I don't know 
if they really know Jesus or not. My desire would be is that they would know Jesus. That they would know the real Jesus. I didn't get into a lot of scripture with them. I read there was one scripture in the book of Luke. Um, I did tell them to go and get their Bible and read Revelation 22. It talked about that pure river of life flowing clear as crystal. And I'll, I'll give y'all the same homework I give them. Go get your Bible out, open it to the last chapter of the, of the Bible and sit there and read them 20 or so verses that are in the last chapter. He makes it very clear. I could spend another 30 minutes talking to you about it. I'm not tongue tied to talk about it, but it mentioned about the ones who follows the commandment. And I explained to them what the commandment was. And I guess what I'll do is go ahead and read you what I read to the church yesterday. Listen to what the Lord considers the commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. He took 600, I think it was, 613 maybe, of how many total commandments there was. He broke them down into 10, and then he funneled it down into the two that I just read. That was in Luke chapter 10, and verse 27. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. You want to be pleasing to the Lord? Try putting to practice them, that one verse right there. I, I have a feeling, it's like I told the church yesterday, I have a feeling that's the reason we run into so many issues and so many problems is because we're not doing that verse right there. We don't love him like we should. We don't honor him as we should. We come when we want to. We, we stay away when we, when we feel like it. I mean, we're wishy-washy. We're in one minute, out the next minute. That's not what he said right there in that verse. He said to love the Lord with all your heart. Do I love the Lord with all my heart sometimes? No. I'm the one bringing the message. The fingers that I was pointing at them yesterday is the fingers that points back at me. I'm not taking myself away from any of the guilt at all. I'm just telling you that the Lord Jesus, if we're going to end up calling him master, if you call him master, and I believe there was one place in, in, well, in the song here, it called him master, but I believe there was a place over in Revelation 22 that also called him master as well. Is he your master today? Is he mastering you? I'm just giving you a little bit of what we talked about today in the nursing home. I pray that you know him. I pray that you're honoring him. I pray that you'll always seek him and desire him. You know, you never get tired of seeking Something that's going to blow your ever-loving mind when you get there. You know, I was thinking about heaven on the way home today. You know, when your mind is on the things of heaven, you don't stop. You continue to keep on thinking about it. Elderlyministry.com is a website. If you want to chat, talk, whatever, pray, whatever, give me a call, share the video. Let's be mindful of the Lord until he returns, because I do believe it's very, very soon. Thank y'all.
for watching.